Hi, I'm Leo, and I'm here to talk about books while filming myself from the waist up to hide the fact I'm wearing pyjamas. I collect old books for a lot of reasons. One is that I quite like the idea of hanging on to information that most people have forgotten. I'm definitely playing on easy mode by collecting the written word. Collecting forgotten bits of the spoken word seems way more difficult, like going outside and talking to people difficult. Thankfully, there are people out there who are way more motivated than I am, people with enough energy to get dressed in the morning, and they've published their results. And so, a lot of books with collections of oral histories have made their way onto my shelf. Because these are old school anthropological texts, boy howdy are their minefield of racism sometimes, which comes in two main forms, either the researchers sneering at the so-called savages they're studying, or them neutrally presenting the oldie timey racist things their subjects are saying. The book we'll be looking at today is in the latter of these two camps. It is the Scottish Council for Research and Education's 1950 publication, Traditional Number Rhymes and Games. It uses the n-word probably more frequently than you'd expect to find in a non-academic compilation of children's rhymes, but that's how tradition rolls. It's full of terrible things that we can choose to keep or to discard. Some of the ones in here that are worth keeping are absolute gems, though. I don't know if they'll compete with whatever's entertaining the kids these days, if it's Minecraft or Peppa Pig or Knife Crime or something, but they'll be handy to have on hand when civilization collapses in a couple of years. I'm going to have a flip through, see what I can find that might placate the knife-wielding kid gangs in the post Peppa Pig wasteland, and sneer at some of the worst offences in it, like the hack anthropologists of old. I don't know if I had an unreasonably folksy childhood, but I certainly recognised a lot of the rhymes in this book. My cat is here. One moment. Anyway, let me know in the comments if I butcher any of your childhood favourites. If you do get your hands on a hard copy, you get to enjoy this bonus feature, that the spine is printed from bottom to top. I looked up why this might be, and are surprised to find there is no global convention on which a round spine should go. There are two schools of thought. If it's printed from top to bottom, like most English books are, then it's much easier to read when they're on their side with the covers facing upwards, whereas if they're printed from bottom to top, apparently, if they're on a shelf, it's much easier to read them as you go past because we're used to reading from left to right. Either way, the fact that both of these standards exist makes it much harder to go back and forth between the two, so I think I'm going to stick to my enormous chunky hardbacks with their horizontally printed titles. Anyway, on to the inside of the book. Now, there's not much information about this book or its author, a Miss F. Doreen Gullen, available outside of its own preface, so let's continue this introduction in the book's own words. In which the panel on early number teaching of the Scottish Council for Research and Education acknowledges that repetition of number rhymes by young children did not contribute to a knowledge of number, it created a pleasurable attitude to number. The panel felt that acquaintance with Scottish number rhymes was fast dying, and that this would be a distinct loss to Scottish culture. They accordingly decided that such rhymes should be assembled and made available to infant teachers. Or infant teachers. People who teach infants, not infants who are teachers. There we go. There's no hyphen. The task of collecting the rhymes fell to Miss F. Doreen Gullen, secretarial assistant to the council. I just love that they've fobbed off on the hardest working secretary in all the land, just the job of taking the minutes from every child in the country. And we have a list of people who are clearly far too busy to actually go and do the dirty work themselves. And the contents, 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 ah, introduction, here we go. And the introduction talks about the methodology that was used to gather a load of these, but it also bemoans the fact that a lot of jealous copyright holders wouldn't allow their things to be republished, which was certainly withering to the writer's self-esteem. So she goes as far as to name and shame three of the worst offenders. She goes on to talk about how difficult it is to make a cohesive list from this thing that organically evolves and is different from playground to playground and child to child, until eventually she says, The compiler is regretfully aware of the inadequacy of the section on ball bouncing, while skipping rhymes are barely touched upon. It is to be hoped that unsatisfied readers will prosecute inquiries into their own neighbourhoods, and if the results are rewarding, make them available to their colleagues, which is basically a way of saying, You think this isn't good enough? It's fucking hard! Fuck you, you try for once! She's also justifiably flabbergasted by how impenetrable some of the old riddles are. Things like tink tank under a bank ten about four. The answer to which is a cow being milked. Guessing the answer may be well beyond children, but the definitions give all the pleasure of superior knowledge and mystery. Personally, I definitely take issue with these kind of riddles, whose trick is to be phrased badly rather than cleverly put together. In other words, these are the needlessly obtuse riddles the weird kid uses so they can feel big about themselves when only they know the answer. I know this because I'm pretty sure I was that weird kid once. There are over 400 of these in the book, and I've picked out around 50 I actually like, but let's see how many actually make the edit. Let's start the edit now by skipping number one and going straight to number two. A rhyme for working the feet as the child sits in the holder's lap. 
Feetykin, feetykin, when will you gang? With the Nick Stone Shorts and the Days Turn Lang, our toddling gang, toddling gang. And I've picked this one just because I really like the name Feetykin for a children's feet. Anyway, skipping onwards, we have the absolute banging classic, Here's the Church and Here's the People. A toe counting rhyme. Let us go to the wood, said this pig. What to do there, says that pig. To look for my mother, says this pig. What to do with her, says that pig. Kiss her to death, says this pig. And number seven, this clapping game that seems to start as a rhyme but then just breaks down into a racist tirade. My mother said that if I should play with the gypsies in the wood, she would say, you naughty girl, you naughty girl to disobey. I just like that the rhyme completely loses its xenophobic shit at the first mention of gypsies. That's classic folklore. I did mention that this book is a minefield of petty racism, didn't I? The follow-up other version is... My mother said that if I should play with the gypsies in the wood, the wood was dark, the grass was green, in came Sally with a tambourine. I went to the sea, no ship to get across, I paid ten shillings for a blind white horse. I up on his back and was off in a crack. Sally, tell my mother I shall never come back. Well, that's what the mother gets for shouting at her for playing with the gypsies in the wood. Number ten, an arm and leg wagging rhyme. The doggies gave to the mill, this way and that way. They took a lick out of this wife's poke, and a lick out of that wife's poke, and loop in the lead and dip in the dam, and gave home walloping, walloping, walloping. Classic nonsense. I mean, it probably has an actual great deal of meaning to it, but still, classic nonsense. Number 13, a finger count. This little cow eats grass, this little cow eats hay. This little cow runs away, this little cow does nothing but lie still all day. We'll whip her. Okay, Scotland, if you say so. On to number 16, another finger count. Thumb, bold, thibbity, sold, lang man, lick man, mum's little man. I quite like that one, it's charming. Another thumping club classic, two little dicky birds, and then we're on to the tallies. We have a duck and a drake and a half penny cake and a penny to pay the old baker, a hop and a scotch and another notch, Slytherum, Slatherum, take her. Oh, I'm always worried I'm going to accidentally sacrifice someone to the Goblin King if I read these. Oh well. Counting out rhymes. These are your classic children choosing someone things, like Eeny Meeny Miny Mo, which is here in all of its original racist glory, but thankfully this book does provide 22 in total other less n-word heavy counting rhymes. Although there is this one about Paddy the Irishman being hit by a train, and this being YouTube, I'm certain someone in the comments will argue that these two racial slurs are identical. Let's move on. We have one of many that are about people suffering from some slow degenerative illness. Master Monday, how's your wife? Very sick and like to die. Can she eat? Oh yes, as much as I can buy. She makes the porridge very thin, a pound of butter she puts in. Black pudding, white clout, eerie oori, you are out. It's important that we remember these rhymes so the children can start singing them again when the Tories finally kill off the NHS and we move to a more American style system. Let's see if we can find something jollier, shall we? Now number 44 isn't a very interesting rhyme but does have an interesting footnote. Zinti teenty, caligo lum, pitching torties down the lum. Who's there? Johnny Blair. What do you want? A bottle of beer. Where's your money? In my purse. Where's your purse? In my pocket. Where's your pocket? I forgot it. Go down the stair, you silly blockhead. You are out. The footnote reads, Who was Johnny Blair? He also occurs on page 50. Now, with the benefit of modern technology, I have enhanced ability to research, and through Google I can tell you that Johnny Blair is a Scottish film director who won the 2014 British Academy Scotland New Talent Awards. Going past counting fruit stones and the aforementioned lamentably small ball bouncing section, we come to inducement to count with Round and round the rugged rock the ragged rascal ran. If you can tell me how many R's are in that, you're a very clever man. And if you slap a patronising 90% of people won't be able to solve this banner on it, you've just invented Facebook. Oh, don't forget the little crying with laughter emoji. Where would we be without the crying with laughter emojis? How else would we know it's meant to be funny? That'll do for now. Stay tuned for the second half, which will be much like the first, but with callbacks to jokes I've already made. You know how it works. Cheerio! Bonus fact. I looked up the Scottish Council for Research in Education to see if I could find any other hits they've released, and I was entertained by two things I found on their Wikipedia page. First of all, it fails to keep a neutral tone and describes its members as a who's who of the greats in the field. Secondly, it slips up ever so slightly by saying that a breed of Swedish scent hound was on the council.